Welcome back everyone. Jumping right into it. The new brake discs showed up this morning and I've been busy with them already. I do want to call something out right off the bat in case anyone wants to use this episode as a guide to putting brakes together on a production tractor. We all know these new parts are never 100% OEM spec. So the first issue I found with these was if we compare the new one with an old one, look at the width of the teeth inside. The old one has a lot narrower teeth than the new one. So when I went to fit these up to the bull pinions in the tractor, because I always like to do just kind of a, a dry run, you know, see how things are gonna go. I noticed that, starting this on the splines, all right. When I would put the innermost disc on, it would not go in far enough to contact the plate and it would start getting tight on the bull pinion splines. Now, we also have the X factor of a production bull pinion in a prototype plate in a prototype case that kind of increases the margin of error as well, throws a few wild cards into the mix. So what I ended up finding was all these factors combined, the disc had to go in so far that I was getting into the root of the splines where they start to ramp up and go to full shaft diameter. So these wider teeth were starting to catch on the ramped portions of that bull pinion and they were starting to tighten up. So all this fresh shiny metal, I had to put a three-sided bevel on the insides of the teeth on the innermost discs. And what that did was create enough clearance that I get a free float, we can go all the way up, hit that plate, everything fits just fine. So your mileage may vary. If you are putting these new pieces into a production tractor, you may not have this problem. I did, so it might be something that's good to just keep in the back of your mind. Check it out before you go to throw the pressure plates on. So with that out of the way, let's get going. Preps done off camera, very light coating of grease on the stud for that square spacer. We'll do the same thing to the bolts as well, and that's just more to keep the rust and corrosion down between those pieces. And I also took the silicone brake grease and a brush, and we hit um, the lands of the bull pinion splines where the brake disc will ride. So the disc can go on. Yep, good right there. Also uh, use that same silicone grease on the three um, guide pucks. Right there's the third one of the pressure plates. So they will be lubricated somewhat against that square block. Get the clevis down through the opening just like that. All right. And the silicone brake grease on the outer portions of the splines for the outer disc. And we end with the cover. So we've got thread sealer on the uppermost um, bolt because that's our open hole into the case. So we just see how everything wants to line in. The nice part is I can see in here through the top a little bit, kind of see if everything's lining up properly. Another fun fact about these covers, being prototype, you know, we don't really have the uniformity of mass produced parts. These are definitely clocked a certain way. They, it matters very much left to right. You have to get them on the correct sides. But if I were to rotate these one series of bolt holes either direction, I could probably hammer it in and hammer it back out and it would go. But if I rotated it another series of holes, it doesn't fit at all. So you very much have to test fit these beforehand, get them clocked where they are happiest because um, they just kind of drilled all the holes where everything wanted to land. And as long as it went together one time, that was good enough. Okay, I've got the bolts not quite tight. We're just starting to touch the lock washers. So at this point, I need to just temporarily throw this pull rod in with the uh, dome top sleeve. And what that is going to do is 
allow me to do just a light break application and that's going to center out the pressure plates as well as those primary two square sided spacers and if this top one wants to get into the mix well he can if he so chooses so just need to get it up here where I can get start getting a pull you can hear the grease on those cam ramps okay All right, we're up against it. Tighten it in right there. We seem to have pretty smooth operation so far. It doesn't take much of a pull before that brake starts to apply. So I'm going to hold the pedal up. I'll set you guys up here. We'll do a function check real quick. I should also mention in here, our bolt is looking really good. It's flushed out with, uh, with the case. So I'm going to keep holding up on the pedal. Watch this bull pinion. All right, all I'm gonna do is let go of the pedal. See that? We're working through the differential now. So lift up on the pedal, we're back to spinning. So at least in a no load state, all it takes is just the weight of that brake pedal to uh, to get that brake to actually uh, hold. So we can take the pull rod out and move on to the other side. Let's see if we're any better on this side, if we go any smoother or not. Again, pre-clocked this cover because they do definitely have a favorite spot. Slight brake application once again. Good. Function check once again, watch the bull pinion on this other side. I'm holding up on the pedal, it spins freely. Now that's just weight of the pedal. And, yep, it engages. Holding up on the pedal again, it spins freely. It's evident that our stack height is right there because look at, I bet that clevis and pole rod only move eighth of an inch, three sixteenths of an inch, they just start pushing those pressure plates apart and we've already got brake lock up. So luckily all of our production and new non-OEM and prototype pieces and everything are coming together working just fine. Pull rod back out, we can move on. So now that we feel a little bit better about what we've got going on here, we can finish up with the rest of the brake hardware. So we, um, we've got the dust shield and the spring. Start those onto the clevis. Spring is a little bit of a friction fit on there. There we go. Just slide it over the end. And we've got the pull rod. So we might as well start. This is going to be a trick. Trying to do this, keep it all together. Might as well start the jam nut on it. Run that down just a little ways. And we need this flat washer right here. It is in the production 445 parts manual. And I think I just, uh, I messed up. I ran that jam nut down too far. It's inhibiting me now. Bottom's in the pedal before I can line it in. All right, that flat washer goes up against the end of the clevis and just kind of keeps the uh, the end coils of that spring under control. Okay, about like that. Now I'm using my shoulder to, uh, <laughs> to lift that brake pedal. I'm going to run this pull rod in and get some, just get the pedal up where it looks about right. Yeah, we can go some more.
Okay. Jam nut up. We don't have to tighten anything yet. We're just proving out. All right. And of course, repeat the same steps for the other side. All right. All right, it is the next day, and Old Man Winter seems to be uh, happy keeping me working on X231. I thought I would have been into the cosmetic work on the Farm All H by now, but seeing as how we are still getting snow, and we have even more coming later tonight, and then more again coming next week, I think that kind of changed my workflow plan for Old Christine. Um, follow me in the shop, I'll give you the update. Now, my original plan was to have all of the brake stuff in place like we have it now and then move on to that hydraulic pump and we'll have this thing sealed up ready for primer. But with the turn in the weather, I don't feel the sense of urgency to get into the pump that I had before. Instead, now that we are this far into getting the brake pedals and everything in place, I think I want to move into doing the foot plates and the brake lock. That will let us get our full up position established for the brake pedals. We can set the free play travel. We can verify we've got good threads and adjustment down here that we can pull it off. We can get return springs in place. We can get the brake lock in place. And I think we've got another assist spring on this clutch pedal that we can also put in as well. So here are the foot plates for X231. They're laid out exactly as they would be on the chassis as it sits right now. We have some extra stuff on them. This ground cable, not supposed to be there, and I'm pretty sure it was making awesome contact anyhow. So if we can look at the copy of the old archive photo, we had no ground cable on that foot plate. And the next view, we can see there's a footstep that's been added here. If we blow the photo up for this side, we had no footstep in place on that foot plate. So the rest of this is some brake lock stuff, some return springs that all need it bad, and we'll get into that later. But I think the first step toward refurbing these plates is to get a lot of the extra pieces off that don't belong. There, that one's freed up enough. You can take it off without the wrench. We have the ever professional oversized nut for a spacer and I really doubt that's a Rockford piece. <laughs> and well, that's fortunate. So throw that piece away. We kept the little uh, bump up intact. They didn't have to drill it out because they used a small size bolt anyhow. So we could make it just like that never happened. Foot step off now. Let's see if we can get it off that bolt. It really pulled on the front of the foot plate there. That's actually a Rockford bolt. Wow. Okay. You can discard that. This is a factory brace though. That's not a Rockford bolt. That's worn pretty pretty bad anyhow, so. We will end up straightening this one out a bit. We've got a couple little bends in it, but we've got a lot of work to do up here. Got a bulge and a crack right there. That slot's ripped out. That hole's been ripped out. The crack goes up there. We'll have to fix all that. Flipped over now. I'm going to take this brace off. We can get the bolt out of there. And just, uh, yeah, handmade kind of ground clearance where it needed to be. Otherwise straight. This hole could probably stand to be closed up a little bit. We'll see what that looks like once we get further into it. And we have another little spacer between the big plate and the small one. So this all apart. You can tell again, yeah, this is just a handmade piece. Just putting everything together however they needed it. So we've got smaller rear plate, 
larger front plate, lots of grease that need to be taken off. Yeah, we're gonna repair this whole front edge. For the most part though, this back one doesn't look too bad. Again, a lot of grease to come off, but it's not damaged, not rusted. Liking that so far. Other side now, we should get these wires off. I think these were uh, leftover remnants of, you know, when they broke the brake return springs, they were just finding something wherever to wire them to. All the holes in these panels just happened to be a convenient place. That one was a tough one. Got him out of the way. Yeah, this other one doesn't look to be anything even close to factory. We've got the same center brace on this one. So we'll get that one taken out. Yep, pretty much the same thing. Clearly handmade. Again, we've got quite a egged out hole. We could probably close up a little bit. And here we got the same spacer piece, but it looks like we're missing a bolt, like one used to go in right up here. That center hole's just all plugged with old grease. That one probably, yeah, I think we can just barely see where it used to be right off the end of my thumb right there. So, yeah, we'll get that corrected when we put everything back together. Again, this one really doesn't look horrible. Lots of grease, lots of cleaning. And then we have this, uh, this auxiliary bracket at the front, goes all the way across, acts as a uh, stiffener support. They kind of did both these sides differently, but this is in the archive photo as well, so I know it's it's all a factory piece. Some pretty tight bends and everything, but for the most part, it doesn't look too bad. A little bit of a swale we can straighten out, but all right. Lots of cleanup to do. Finding a few bolt holes in there. There, that's that one that should have had a bolt in it. It hasn't for a long, long time either.
Okay, everybody, finally, I've got them all flattened back out and fixed back up. So, yeah, a lot of, uh, a lot of tweaking, uh, a lot of straightening had to happen, and I had to uh, do some crack repair. I, I V'd out, welded, and flushed a crack right there, another one right there, another one right there. And so the whole front of this one, that's the one that was all pulled out and damaged. I closed up all of those uh, open holes and renewed the slots and got everything rounded back out looking good. We've got the braces in much better shape than they were. And well, a couple of other bits of, you could call it damage, I did leave intact. So uh, I did kind of fit a few of these things to gauge what needed to be repaired and what didn't because prototypes are always a little bit weird. We've got a corner that's been cut out of that rear plate and this one as well. And then you look down this edge here, all right, you can see we swale out pretty good at the front right there, but all that stuff has to remain intact because this went about right here, okay, and they cut each back corner away because those two bolt holes on the axle tube, you can see the one off the end of my finger, that's where the uh, rear wheel fender braces, brackets come up. So they, they created a little bit of clearance just by rough cutting that out. And then this front edge here that's all curled up, that actually fits the edge of that case really well. It's almost like they formed it in there to, uh, to have, uh, you know, to avoid having a sharp edge sticking up. So I just decided to leave all that. And there was one more interesting spot right here. After I got some of the grease and rust off, I could tell they ground, just horribly ground that corner off. But that again is for clearance. This piece goes right along here and that helps it to clear that bolt that holds the transmission to the rear casting. So that's just another little modification I left in place. I didn't even dress it up. So that's the odd prototype detail stuff that I think is kind of interesting. Compare and contrast time now. So here are the production foot plates and uh, with the front pieces, these large ones, there's really not a lot different other than they uh, really had some aggressive uh, traction bumps on all the prototype ones. That's just like a cheese grater. And you can tell they tamed them down quite a bit on the production versions. Um, other than that, these front plates are about the same. The rear skinnier ones are a little bit different. You can see how um, the prototype one is wider and has this extra flange, whereas the production ones just have a single flange back there. Otherwise, everything's pretty close to all being the same. Mounting brackets on the production foot plates were also streamlined quite a bit from the rather erector set diagonal brace and spacer plate and everything else arrangement on the prototypes. The two back corners just used that piece and that piece that went under four of the transmission case flange bolts. And then we had this uh, straight across bracket at the front with the tight angle bend short drop on both sides that mimics what just the right side front bracket was on the prototype. The final difference with the productions is that they offset this rear plate quite a bit, whereas the prototype ones were pretty much in a line with each other down the outer edge. And the reason they did that was the difference in how they attached to the tractor. So the prototype plates will be pretty high, okay, about this level right here, but the production plates actually attached much further down. And this back one pretty much covered over the center of that uh, brake housing cover. So that's why they had to offset that a little bit more. And they do definitely set you up quite a bit higher on the prototype. That's also why the pedals had to be longer because all your panels were higher and in a different spot. So that pretty much does it for the differences. Um, we've got about a dozen good Rockford bolts in both of these um, plate sets that I think I'm gonna go ahead and uh, salvage <laughs> you know can't have enough good hardware but that's about going to do it for this one i'm going to call the episode right here tune in next time though we will start fitting the foot plates and see how all those newly straightened brackets are going to line in or not 
And no, really, I need to start setting a few of those pieces in to see where the holes are gonna line up to decide which side of the hole I might need to weld on to close up. You just have to start putting that stuff together and see how it all shakes out. Thank you again, everyone, for watching, and I hope to see you back next time.